A huge shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. They are a wonderful place to host your online presence. I have used them for the past decade from everything from food blogging to newsletters to opening an online store. It was always Squarespace because they are so easy to use. They offer many, many free templates that you can use to build your website that are aesthetically pleasing and intuitive. They offer ways in which you can connect all your social Social media accounts they have a comment section so that you can engage with your community they have member only areas all in all they make it really easy to create a community focused presence online which I think is essential and I would highly highly recommend them especially in the new year if you want to create a new blog open a new store need a landing page for a future project all you have to do is head over to squarespace.com for a free trial you build your website and once you love it and you're ready to launch you can go to squarespace.com slash Nina Montagnier and save 10% off of your first purchase of a website or a domain so thank you so much Squarespace two books that I've been enjoying greatly and I want to talk about them. They are similar in the way that they are structured. They have a very unique structure and I have been enjoying them immensely. And the first one is Poor Things. I watched the film last week absolutely adored it. I think it'll be my favorite movie of the year um, or at least one of my favorite movies of the year and I know that it's only January. In fact, it's only the second week of January but I just found it not only visually spectacular but the characters were so endearing and I am obsessed with it. Anyway, I went, I picked up the book and Usually I'm a little bit sad when I watch a film that I really like that is based on a book because then I feel like I don't have my own unique experience with the book in which I get to imagine the characters. But I feel like watching the movie has greatly enhanced my experience with this book. This just feels like a collage because it has illustrations. Um, as you can see here, it has shifting perspectives, it has like integrations, it's, it's like a book within a book, it has um, <laughs> photographs, it's just such an immersive, fun experience. I will greatly recommend it without even having finished it yet. The next one is After Sappho and this one is unique in the way that it's told through vignettes. Each vignette is from like a different character, a different year. It basically follows this group of feminists, writers, artists, creatives that are fighting for the liberation of women, for women's rights. It is beautifully written. It is so lyrical. I've already marked a few <laughs> paragraphs because I am just in awe of the writing. This is a horrific book cover. <laughs> I will say this, it's horrific. I've seen much more beautiful book covers, um, but I just got this one from the library and I suspect that I will want to buy this so that I can have it myself and yeah, annotate. And yeah, those are the two books that I've been reading. Um, so far. So I spent some time last week doing my little reflections of 2023 and writing and reflecting upon what I want to bring into 2024 and what I want to emulate, etc, etc. Listen, <laughs> New Year's resolutions, 
do not work for me. They have never worked for me. They're really exhilarating. They're really exhilarating to make because you're like, I am about to change everything I am right now to something a lot better. <laughs> but I always fail at them. I always lose interest. Like I'm telling you, it takes less than a month and I'm out there doing something entirely different. So what I tend to do is I just, I just reflect and I just write and write and see kind of what it inspires and what I want to spend more time doing. And so this year, <laughs> the, the, the dreams and the goals are, are small. They are teeny tiny. So much so that one of my goals this year is to <laughs> watch more films. <laughs> it's watch more films and listen to albums to completion and make time each week to read articles and to engage less passively with art and with media and to prioritize long content format. <laughs> I, this year, I want to be educated. I want to be well-rounded. This memory of mine is just, it's, I, I have a terrible memory. And so I read a lot and I love the things that I read. And there's a lot of things that I wish I could bring up in conversation at least two weeks after. And I'm telling you, I can't. So therefore, I bought myself some notebooks to review things and to be intentional with the things that I watch and consume and enjoy or do not enjoy. And one thing that I really enjoy that brings me a lot of happiness is anti-productivity. And what I mean by that is that I don't tend to divvy up tasks. I don't tend to want to do things quicker. I like the process. I like the process. I like the rabbit holes. I like spending a whole day thinking about things that, you know, are not going to <laughs> make me richer, are not going to like improve my life career-wise, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But I enjoy, I enjoy, uh, I enjoy getting lost in a little rabbit hole. So I have one notebook for films and books and um, albums and things that I consume that I want to remember or review. I also just want to get better at reviewing things. I do want to learn about the creative process of the people behind the things that I consume and kind of, you know, sit with the feelings after and do a little bit of research and that is yeah and then i have another notebook for articles that i read because this is the year that i want to fill the education void and i am not going to let my brain rot any further <laughs> that is all to say that i'm gonna go watch the boy and the heron <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm very excited to go watch it. I've been wanting to watch it since it came out, which was a little while ago. So it'll be nice to go do that. Anyway, there are two things before I go. Number one, it is very humid, so I might change this shirt. <laughs> and I thought you had to know this before I left. And the second thing is that I read Rouge. This is the first book that I finished this year. And I must say that I'm quite disappointed with this and I hate starting the year with a book that I hate and I think that I kind of hated it. There are so many plot lines that don't get resolved. It is extremely repetitive. It feels to me like a novella that was just stretched out into 300 plus pages. It just did not need to be this long. Um, I felt the ending was lackluster. I'm being a little bit harsh. <laughs> <laughs> maybe there was so much potential though and i think that's what makes me really sad because i think that the topics that g is exploring in this book are very intriguing to me like there was so much to say about you know the toxicity of the beauty industry or like mother-daughter relationships um being biracial etc etc but there was nothing new added to the conversation. And this is about the main character, Belle, who is obsessed with skincare. This is why I mentioned the beauty industry, obsessed with skincare. Um, and she is trying to navigate the mysterious death of her mother. And when she goes to the funeral, she sees this woman in red and she kind of takes her to this spa. And then all of these very strange things start unraveling. So it's kind of like a psychological thriller. It does have like some fairy tale, fantastical elements to it. Um, again, I don't know, kind of a, a no for me. Um, 
So yeah, that's unfortunate and that's okay. And this is the beauty of getting books from the library. As soon as a book comes out that I have no emotional connection to, but a lot of people are talking about it as a new release, I just get it from the library. And if I really love it, then I end up buying it. And if I don't, thank goodness I didn't spend like 24, 25, sometimes $30 in Australia. So anyway, <laughs> that was a bit rude. That was very long, that was 15 minutes, Jesus.